Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. Now the Odyssey Blue from Seed Studio is much more than just a mini PC that would use in let's say an office environment. It has several features that make it very, very interesting for a diverse range of different applications, including using it as a router or using it like PFSense OpenWRT on it because it has two gigabit ethernet ports. And also it has a built-in Arduino, so a built-in microcontroller, which of course you can program from Windows and Linux. And then you've got the pins, the header pins on that that can go out to the real world and control relays and read sensors and whatever it is that you want to do and then on top of that it's got a 40 pin Raspberry Pi compatible header that you can program from within Linux so you can actually get a Linux program to control the pins and then those pins can also talk to the Arduino because they're separate the Arduino is actually just a microcontroller built in there so lots and lots of possibilities and in this video I want to look at how you program the Arduino that's built into the Odyssey Blue and also how you access those 40 GPIO pins. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Here's a quick overview of the Odyssey Blue. It's got an Intel Celeron J4105 as a quad core processor. It's got the Intel UHD Graphics 600, certainly enough to power a desktop, not something you'd want for gaming, but this is not what this uh, device is planned for. You get 128 gigabyte SSD. In fact, there are two M2 slots and I was able to add a second uh, M2 storage device to my machine, meaning I could make a dual boot PC to boot into Windows of one and into Ubuntu from the other. And also it has dual gigabit ethernet. So if you are interested in that, I think I'll do a video about how you could use both of those, let's say in PFSense or maybe uh, in TrueNAS or something like that. We'll see something that can use uh, the advantage of having that uh, dual gigabit ethernet. It's got dual band Wi-Fi, 2.5 gigahertz and five gigahertz. It can support up to two 4K displays. And the most important thing for us is it has this built-in uh, Arduino. So as you can see here, it lists two important things. You've got an integrated Arduino code processor. That's the AT Sam D21. That's a Cortex uh, M0, and that's built in. And you have the pins available on the motherboard. And next to those pins, you also have a Raspberry Pi compatible header of 40 pins, which is accessible directly from uh, from Ubuntu. In this case, you can program it directly from inside of the operating system. And so if you see here, you've got the 28 pin Arduino header and you've also got the 40 pin Raspberry Pi one. And what we're gonna do first of all is just connect a simple LED circuit to the Arduino pinout. So if you look at the pin out there, you've got D0, D1, D2, all the way down. And also you've got some uh, voltage, 3.3 3 .3 volts, 5 volts. And what we're going to do is going to connect something from D13, which is pin 27, through an LED and then back to the ground, which is on pin 28. And then we're going to write an Arduino per, uh, program to just flash to blink that LED. Okay, so here's a very simple circuit, just an LED and a resistor. We're gonna connect the positive side of the LED to D13, pin 27, and then we're gonna connect the uh, outside of the, uh, coming out from the resistor to the ground, that's pin 28. And now let's go over to the Arduino and actually write a program to make this flash. Okay, so here we are in the Arduino. Now, before we get into the code, we need to add uh, board support for the uh, Cortex-M0. It's called a seed. Duino Zero. So what you do is you go up to File. This is the IDE version two. It's very similar in IDE 1.8. And in here, when it says Additional Board Manager, we need to type in a particular URL. Now, Seed Studio got lots and lots of documentation about their devices, and there's a section here about how you get this board support added. And what you need to do is you need to add in this URL here, which adds those different boards. So what you do is you go to the wiki there that they've got and then you just basically cut and paste that into Arduino. That will go ahead and start downloading the information about the boards. Then what you do is you go over up to, to Tools, Board. Now we haven't got an AVR board, we've got a, a Cortex-M0 board, so we go to Board Manager, okay? And that will bring up a list of all the boards that are available. And we need to type in as a search here to filter seed with three E's, of course, that's their brand name. And then we need to go down here to where it says seed uh, Sam D boards by 
uh, Seed Studio and we need to click on the install button. To get that installed, the ID will go ahead and download all the things that it needs to install that. Okay, once that's installed, we go up to Tools here, Board. Now you can pick the ones from Seed Studio and we want the uh, Seeduino Zero. And then finally, we need to actually find its COM port. There you go, automatically picked on COM6. Of course, there is no cables or anything you need to connect. It actually just is built into the board and there's a permanent connection there. Now, here's our very simple Blink program. We're doing two things at the beginning here. First of all, we are setting the uh, serial port so we can see things coming out of there. And also remember D13, that's where we connected the LED to. We're specifying that an output. And then here in the loop, what do we do? We print out the loop as we go around so we can see something coming out the serial port and we also turn D13 high and then low which basically means to go on and off on and off on and off and start uh, running uh, blinking like that so let's just compile it and upload it and it will just uh, compile it and because as I say it's put, built into the motherboard it just uploads it onto the uh, the SAMD microcontroller there and just starts working. And so here we can see the LED flashing according to this very simple program that we wrote. Okay, now we're gonna go over into Linux and see how we can use the 40 pin uh, header to talk to the Arduino and actually get a little, a little circuit going here where Linux talks to the 40 pins and the one of the pins talks to the Arduino, the Arduino then uh, does something. We'll, we'll talk about it, let's, let's go over to Linux. Okay, so the uh, Odyssey Blue has a 40 pin GPO header that's compatible with the Raspberry Pi. So that, that means the pins are in the same places. And as you can see, it's got obviously it's got a UART, it's got SPI, it's got uh, uh, I squared C, and there's also of course just general GIO pins, ground pins, and uh, power pins. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect from GPIO 419, which is BCM26, and we're gonna connect that through to D6 on the Arduino uh, pinout, so the two can talk to each other. And then we're gonna write a little program that can send a message from one to the other by raising the pin high or low. Now, the way you access the GPIO pins is basically by executing some command on the uh, command line. So you basically need to go into this directory, sys class GPIO. You need to talk to say which pin it is that you're going to start working with. Once you copy that number to the file export, it will create a directory called GPIO and then that number. And then here you can set the direction and set the value. We wanna make it an output and we wanna make it either zero or one. So I've written a little Python program that executes those commands according to a button that I press using Qt Python. Let's have a quick look at that program. So here is the program. Now, most of this is to do with Qt. So I haven't done any videos about this, but it's very easy to write uh, GUI programs using Python, using Python Qt. And so here we basically create a button, one that says on. Here we create another button, one that says off. Do a bit of layout stuff so they come up one under the other. Uh, and then basically we set up some uh, callbacks. So if you click the off button, it calls the off button was clicked. If you click the on button, it calls the on button was clicked. And those here are just two functions which basically call command line. As we saw here, it echoes one, that means on, to the name of that GPIO pin. Uh, and it echoes zero to the name of the GPIO pin. The GPIO pin is something that's defined hard coded to be 341 up there. For this program, we'll call it using the other pin that we actually wanted to use. And then basically down here, it just sees what uh, pin you pass in as a parameter. It makes sure that export stuff happens that we just talked about a moment ago, and then it runs the program. So let's just run it and you'll, you'll see it, what it does from a user interface point of view. Okay, so here it is running, and basically it just gives you off and on. And when you do that, it sets that pin high or low on the GPIO pin. So here we are actually accessing this from within Linux. So imagine you can write now any program you like in C, in Rust, in Go, in Python, uh, and you can now start uh, controlling the GPIO pins the 40 GPIO pins from the Linux side, and they can then also optionally talk to the microcontroller for it to do things. So a lot of possibilities here for doing automation stuff. Of course, this has got access to the network, so you can access through this kind of a gateway. Lots and lots of ideas you could do here. I'm just literally showing you the simplest, which is getting an LED to flash on and off. Okay, let's have a look at the Arduino program. So the Arduino program is very simple, very much like the Blink program, but a thing to note here, 
is on this D6, we now mark that as an input because we want to see what's coming over from the 40 pin header into the Arduino header. And then basically we've got this loop and we set the LED high like we did before and we set the LED low like we did before. But here's the thing, if it reads a D6, if it's high, it delays for two seconds. If it is low, it delays for only 200 uh, milliseconds. So basically by clicking that on and off in that little Python program, I can control whether the LED is blinking quickly or slowly. It's, sim it's really as simple as that. Okay, let's, uh, let's see it running. So we're gonna compile and upload uh, onto the board. This is the Linux version, of course, very, you can, very similar to what you do on Windows. So one thing to check though, if you are using IDE version two here, I found that you still need to install IDE version 1.8, run the setup scripts, and then run version two. Otherwise version two seems to have some troubles and version two doesn't include those same setup scripts that you have in 1.8. So I don't know what the story is there, but the way to do it, if you wanna run version two of the IDE, of the Arduino IDE, then install 1.8 first and run the setup scripts. Okay, so that's up and running. And so let's go to our little program. So as you can see, once we've set this high now, the LED is flashing slowly. So that's a two second pause on two seconds, off two seconds, on two seconds, off two seconds. And then if we click on off here, that sets that pin low. And so when it reads D6, it's gonna be low. It's now gonna go for 200 milliseconds, which means it flashes much quicker. And so there you go, showing how you can use Linux to talk to the GPIO pins. The GPIO pins can talk to the Arduino. We use the Arduino software to program the microcontroller. And there we go, a nice little demo uh, up and running. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains, and I also have a monthly newsletter. Go to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.